So what we want to do this time is to allow, when I click on an individual movie from this list, to do more than just display the ID here. And the way that we're doing it right now, let's go back to our code and look at app.js. When we're going to a movie, we're saying root path is slash movie slash some placeholder ID, and then we're calling this function movie, which exists right down here. So I'm going to get rid of that entirely, because I'm not going to use it. And instead, I'm going to change this root. I'll delete this entirely and change this to something else. And I'm going to take advantage of rooting to a component with the React router. So I'll say root path equals the same as it was before, slash movies, slash, and then the placeholder ID. But this time, I'm going to use this keyword, component. And it's going to go to, in curly brackets, and I'll call it one movie a component that doesn't exist yet, okay? And then I'll close the tag. Now let's go create this one movie component. So in components, I'll create a new file, which I'll call onemovie.js. And inside of that, I'll go my IMP or IMRC just to get the correct import put in. And we'll go export default class one movie, extends component as usual, and inside of this, I'm going to have my state. So I'll set up state just for this component. I don't care about sharing it with other components at the moment. So I'll declare a variable state is equal to, and we'll give it one key, movie, and we'll make that an empty JavaScript object, okay? And now I'll have a render function, which I have to have, and that will return and I'll wrap everything in a fragment which should auto import, and it did. And in here, I'll put first of all a title. So I'll put uh, H2, which I've been using right along for titles, so I may as well be consistent. And I'll just put some placeholder text in. One movie. Actually, we'll just say movie. And then a colon. And inside of this, I want to put the name of the movie. Okay, now how am I gonna do that? Well, as I said, when we go live, when this is hooked up to an actual back-end REST API, we'll be grabbing that from our remote server. So we'll do it the same way we did with the other list of movies. We'll use the component did mount. And we'll just fake calling an API. We'll say this.setState. And the key is movie. And we'll put some information in there. So in curly brackets, we'll give it an ID. And we'll, the ID that we want actually is passed to us because we rooted to a component, and it's part of the properties. And if you look at the documentation for the React router, we get it this way. This.props, so it's a prop, and we're going to match from the params in the URL, we're looking for ID. And of course, ID is what we have in app.js right here, colon ID. So back to one movie, that gives me the ID. So I'm just faking it right now. The second thing I'll give it is a title, and I'll call it some movie. So no matter what movie we click on, we're always going to get this information, but this is just faking things. And we'll give it a runtime of 150, okay? So now we have some state variables we can use. So here I could do something like this.state.movie.title. And then I'll put a table underneath it, say table class name, and I'll use bootstrap styling for tables, table, table compact, table striped. And I'll give it an empty T head because I don't have any headings. And in the T body, I'll put in a row and a cell. And I'll put in strong title. And on the next TD, right beside it, I'll put the title. TD, and it is again this.state.movie.title. And then I'll copy this entire row and modify it for the runtime. Runtime, we'll make it runtime. 
and put the word minutes after that. And back in AppJS, all I have to do now is import this component. So at the top, import, and I want to import one movie from dot slash components one movie. And if I save this and go back to my web browser and reload this, so there is one movie. So if I go to home, it gives me the home page. If I go to movies, it gives me the Godfather. Now, no matter which one of these three I click on, I'll get the same information, but I should get some information from all of them. So there it is, some movie. Now we can actually verify that we're getting a little bit different information because the IP or the ID is set using our props. Let's go back to our code and go back to one movie. And we'll just put here after the title, just to demonstrate that it works, this.state.movie.id. And if I reload that in the web browser, I have ID2 for this one. This should be ID1, and it is. And this should be ID3, and it is. Okay, so now we're at a point where we can start to work on our go back end and start generating some JSON and sending it back to our React application. And we'll get started on that in the next section.